everyone has at least one thing. A show, game, sport, technology, or something that they can't get enough of. Whatever that is for you, that's your ritual misery. At least, that's the retconned origin of the show's name. But where did the name Ritual Misery really come from? It all started with our early 90s obsession with Metallica. Ritual misery. Our first use of the name was for our doomed garage band. Turns out, bands require musical talent. Fast forward a couple decades, and Amos wanted to try making a Vlogbrothers-style YouTube series. He was pretty good at it. So, here I am, standing right next to the spot where JFK died. There, in the white X. And then if you look right behind me, you can see the place where Oswald shot the shot. It's right up there. Me, not so much. Well, that's it. That's all I have for this video. Uh, hopefully my subsequent videos will be much more interesting. So, we settled on podcasting. We're live. All right, look at that. Our first live broadcast. Eventually, we made our way onto DiamondClub.tv. That was hey, uh, so. Uh, so audio just took a crap. Yeah, yeah. It audio. actually improved for me. <laughs> <laughs> a few South by Southwests, several New Year's Eve streamathons, four and a half years, and 199 episodes later, here we are. Oh, and we had a few guests along the way. This is Margaret Weiss, and you're listening to Ritual Misery Podcast. On this 200th episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're taking you back to the past and looking forward to the future. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 200 for Thursday, the 31st of January, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their, and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. I can't screw this up any more than I already have. Well, maybe I can, but let's not try now. How are you, dude? Sick. I'm sick. We should have had this episode out like... I don't know, however many weeks ago, <laughs> we kept pushing it off for various reasons. You were traveling, I was sick, and then I'm still sick, and I'm like, okay, we we have to get episode 200 out there. So here we are. <laughs> and it's funny because today I'm actually, I woke up this morning just not feeling good, been not feeling good all day, and here we are. This is the best I've felt all day, and I still feel like shit, so we're on a roll. All right, that's an awesome video, man. I love how you cut out to uh, to the Wookiee Grohl. And yeah. uh, the, the, the the Jeremy snore. Is that an actual snippet from him snoring on the show that night? It It isn't. I, okay. I was trying to get one, uh, but it just it wasn't uh, 
it didn't sound right. So <laughs> I got one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So much fun. So much fun. And to have Margaret Weiss, um, I, I got to say that's still my favorite moment of this entire podcast is having Margaret Weiss on the show. That was just yeah. such a complete blast. Dude. And dream come true. Like it was a dream that you didn't even know you had until it. Yeah. Like, had the prospect of happening. Uh, for those that don't know who Margaret Weiss is, she is a science fiction and fantasy author. Uh, one of Amos, Amos's and my favorite book series of all time, yep. uh, Dragonlance. She was one of the yeah all those authors and, and creators of of the whole series. And um, yeah, we we grew up reading those uh, dozens of those. I, I think you've probably read hundreds of them at this point. <laughs> Yes, I've, I've read I, dozens of them. I have, I think, 89 on my shelf right now. Yeah. So uh, So when I just, I don't know, on a whim said, hmm, let me reach out to Margaret Weiss and see if she'd be a, a guest on this this thing that we're, we're doing. Yeah. She said yes, like immediately. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> like I was shaking with excitement. I can't even believe this was real. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, crap. We actually have to do this now. Like, like, the, like the dog that caught the car. Now what the fuck do I do? <laughs> yeah, Dude, I was. I don't know about you, but I was so so nervous. Yeah. During the show. Oh my god. I, I wasn't even nervous for us as much as I was nervous for all of our friends that also grew up that that w- <laughs> listened to our show and grew up reading the same books because we're all part of the same geek circle. Um. I don't know, man. That was just, that was, that was just wild. It was really awesome. Hey, um, yeah. other than being sick, dude, uh, how's your week been, man? Like you just been hanging out, drinking beer, trying to cure the cold or what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, I thought that, that beer, you know, alcoholic beverages were supposed to like kill germs. Uh, apparently that's not true. Hmm. They just, you not care. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, yeah, I, I can't say it's been successful cause I'm, I'm still sick. Hmm. Um, yeah, I haven't really been doing a lot this week other than like finalizing the aforementioned video. Mm -hmm. Um, this past weekend though, I, I did get out and see a movie. Yeah. Um, hmm. did you watch Peter Pan? Uh, no, it's a movie that's in theaters now. (laughs) I'm I'm sure Peter Pan is showing somewhere in some theater. Um, (laughs) Okay. Yeah, actually, you know what? On base, I wouldn't be surprised if they were showing it on base because they're always showing movies for free that are yeah. like 37 years old or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but but no, I, I saw Glass. Yeah? How was it? I had to say I enjoyed it. Yeah? It was, Th- thumbs uh, up? I would give it a thumbs up. Yeah. The the ending was a little... Mm, not sure that's where I would have gone with it, but uh, it was it was good. I, I, I liked it. But it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie, so you kind of expect that at the ending. Well, sure, sure. But this was like kind of the, um, you know, it was the bringing together two, two stories, really. So Unbreakable and Split. So it, right. this movie basically brought those worlds together. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed the execution of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I need to watch Unbreakable again, though. Yeah, that's what we did last week. We yeah. we watched up Breakable and Split again so that we had them fresh in our minds. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would have to do. So um, the military decided they didn't want me to retire right away. They want to put me through a med board to decide whether or not I'm fit to continue my service, which is mandatorily ending because I've hit high year of tenure and decided to uh, retire. And... Um, Got word this morning that that is no longer a thing. They finally came to their senses and they're canceling that out. So I'm not being MEB'd anymore. Oh, um, so, okay. So now the fight is on to get my internship back <laughs> in place because that was on hold. The whole process was on hold while the MEB was going on. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, Dude, that. Oh my gosh. That that changes a lot of things because when we talked last week, there was. Um, there were issues that were happening because of the MEB that were going to impact um, some of the things that we had planned. But this, I, mm, interesting. All right, we're gonna. I'm <laughs> I'm curious to see where this goes now. <laughs> oh my gosh! But so last week, or no, I'm sorry, two weeks ago, mm. uh, we didn't do a show because you were 
not at home. You were nowhere near your podcasting equipment. Right. Uh, I was actually in Washington, D.C., went to visit the National Mall, got to see all kinds of sites. Everything was closed, of course, um, because of the shutdown that <laughs> stopped last week. But uh, it was it was awesome being able to go out and see just these landmarks that, that you've seen in pictures and, and heard about all your life, but never actually been able to reach out and touch, you know. And uh, it, it, it was breathtaking. It was just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and that... It was striking to me because I, I went to D.C. like, geez, I don't know, six, seven years ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. I was about a week and I only I only got to go actually into uh, D.C. proper and see the monuments and whatnot yeah. for one afternoon. It was like one evening. It was like I think I had like four hours. Oh, so geez. I took one of those hop on hop off bus tours to just try to see as, as many things as I could. Yeah. Kind of a whirlwind uh, tourism thing. And. Yeah, it was awe-inspiring. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't like politics or even like paying attention to the craziness that happens in government and stuff like that. And that's all, you know, I get all of that. But when you go to Washington, D.C. and you see these things, uh, it's uh, it changes your perspective a little bit, I think. And it's not going to get you to like politics or even governing, but it will give you an appreciation that you didn't have before. Yeah, and there's a lot of history there, and there's a lot of. It, it, to me, the the thing that got me the the uh, that struck me the oddest was just how close everything is. Like I was on, you can literally in one day walk from one end of the National Mall to the other and stop by the White House on your way, and it's not even that big of a deal. Like it's 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 just a day walking around. They're like a mile and a half from each other or something like that. So it's not even like a long distance or whatever. Um, and everything is so close. You got the Smithsonian right there. You've got, uh, the white house is just off of the national mall. You know, we, we got to see Marine one land at one point and it flew right next to the, the Washington monument and went straight to the white house. And, you know, they had to close down the streets and stuff. And, um, it's just, everything's so stinking close. It's ridiculous how close it all is. I didn't realize until I was prepping for the trip that, um, that the Capitol building, is directly across the street from the Library of Congress and the um, Supreme Court. They're both right, literally across the street. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was that was striking how how close everything was. It's you, uh, you have two branches of government, and you could literally on a on a windy day piss across the street to the other one. Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the whole thing is amazing, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I went. I visited several times. Um, my wife and I went to Arlington National Cemetery, which was ridiculously sombering. I uh, mm-hmm. got to see the the changeover of, of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. Um, really, just just overall, really, really cool. Yeah, very nice. Uh, and as a matter of fact, here in a few weeks, I'm going to be in that area. I'm not sure if I'm going to visit any of the monuments again or if I'm just going to stick around kind of the suburbs area i'm gonna be mostly in um uh like the dulles airport area Ooh. it's not dc proper <laughs> but it's uh, you know it's a, it's an easy train ride yeah the city. So I, I, mean, I don't know we'll see i'm going with my boss so mm. it's partially gonna be dictated on on his interests i think yeah the only the, the, so i i didn't get to go into any of the museums and things like that really the only thing that i wish i'd done differently is i wish i had been able to really schedule it ahead of time and go into Congress and actually uh, get to see some of the, the action going on there. Um, I did get to see uh, AOC, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She was, okay. she was leaving one of the, one of the, the representative buildings because they basically have all their, their offices around uh, the Capitol building. And she was leaving one of those with her little entourage and heading into the Capitol building. And I had to stop my scooter to let him by. So <laughs> I saw that, and I thought that was really cool. She looks exactly the same in pictures as she does in real life, which is which tripped me out because that's never the case, but it was here. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I got to say, man, on a political spectrum, without getting political, I think AOC is my new political idol. She is just amazing. Even it, it, I. I can't say I agree or disagree with any of her policies. Well, I could, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say that 
Holy crap, man. She busted in there. She got elected at age 28. She's in there at age 29, and she is just turning over every stone she can find, and it's amazing. It's exactly what I've wanted my entire life to happen in Congress. And I I would, if someone on the opposite end of the spectrum was doing exactly the same thing, I'd be just as happy. Like, it's just... Just going in there with reckless abandon, don't get not giving a shit, and just saying, "Here it is. Here's what's up," and I'm going for it. And it's just awesome. It, yeah. The so what it reminds me of is, if you ever have a room of old dogs, you know, like you know, eight, nine, ten year old dogs just kind of laying around, and then you let loose an eight week old puppy into the room. She's like the puppy, yeah. And then all of the other other uh, uh, representatives are the old dogs. And their reaction to the puppy is basically the, like the old congressman's reaction to her. Just like, ugh, wh- what is she doing? Why is she doing that? Somebody make her stop. <laughs> yeah, uh, Media King 909 says she's a female Trump, and I'm not going to comment other than to say that mm, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not sure that tracks, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, let's let's hit the movie draft and then let's move on to uh, some other business. Oh, I gotta cue that up. Uh, uh, stall for uh, me. So, there's a uh, so I put a link in the show notes to the uh, to the audio file if you wanted to uh, to use that. But so this is actually going to be the final movie draft uh, minute for this season. And um, let's see uh, let's see where we ended up for this season. Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of January 28th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. My buddy bought tickets to the Super Bowl, not realizing his upcoming wedding was on the same day. If you'd like to take his place, the wedding's at three. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Bond Squad adds $5.2 million from Serenity, giving them last place with $317 million. Team Movie Party's in fifth place with $457 million. Team Ritual Misery falls to fourth place with $496.1 million. Team Game Night moves up to third place with $503.7 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in second place with $566.1 million. And with $610.3 million and first place, it's Team Have a Drink. Watch your movie draft minute all told is a record as of january 30th 2019 damn it dude so man, close so close to third place we fell so far man <laughs> we were dominating this game for like the first three quarters of it and then um nothing we got screwed by peter jackson so Thank you're you. you're saying we're the falcons <laughs> wait did peter jackson screw them too uh, <laughs> no, but Drew, uh, Tom Brady did. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, he came out of nowhere in the fourth quarter and just took it all away. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we, have a drink. we haven't made a single penny in like half this draft. So I feel pretty good coming into fourth place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, but yeah, congrats to have a drink. Uh, we'll see what happens next season, which uh, we should we should probably be getting some news start, about that in the start, coming weeks. Start planning for that soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. Hey. Uh. This we we at the beginning of this video or at the, at the beginning of the. Um, uh huh. Words are hard. At, at the beginning of this show, we played a video, and where- that video showed a list of all the people. I believe all the people that have ever been a patron to our yep. podcast, whether or not they're currently active. And we wanted to celebrate that. So we did. If you are not on that list and you would like to be on the next video that Kent makes in a couple hundred episodes, feel free to cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. If you give a fuck, give a buck and we'll see what happens. That's, that's a hell of a tagline. Didn't it? like, did I sell it? Did I take it home? No, it was great. It was <laughs> wonderful. And um, uh, yeah, I just want to echo everything Amos just said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of the patrons, both past and present. You guys have made a lot of things possible for us, and uh, we really, really appreciate it. All right, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. 
MJ Snow in the chat would like to clarify. He says, so you're saying uh, I can turn off being a patron for four years and turn it back on again? And uh-huh. technically you could. We will not dissuade you from that. We appreciate any little bit of help that anyone can give. And if, Absolutely. If, if that means you, you have to turn off for a while and then come back later, we understand, especially uh, when we got 800,000 people missing a couple of paychecks. And I'm, not, oh. I'm trying not to get political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, no, it would be awesome to like show up, give us a buck, and then like just you know put your um, put your patronage on pause. That that would be awesome. You will still show up in the next video. Yeah, uh, we appreciate that. A dollar is a dollar. We we appreciate every one of them. Um, and if we can get eight hundred thousand people to uh, donate just one time, by all means, that just means we'll have a very very long list next time. <laughs> it means a lot more than that, but yes, that is one of the things that, that would mean. Oh my gosh, 800,000 patrons would be literally life-changing for both of us. Um, that would be great. Yeah. All right, Miss. So I put together a few questions for you. Uh huh. This quiz is called 200 IQ. Do you think you have a 200 IQ? I think I get a 110 IQ. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not the worst IQ. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm going to get somewhere between five and six of these right. We'll see. <laughs> I, I, I think the highest IQ ever on record is like 161 or 62, something like that. Yeah, but it's like Madonna or something stupid like that. So <laughs> let's. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, yeah, I, don't I, I don't know if I have a whole lot of faith in those tests. Yeah, I think uh, I think they estimated um, uh, Albert Einstein to be around 160. So yeah, I don't know. 200 would be, would be pretty good. So let's see how you, close you get to to a 200 IQ. All right. All right, so the, the point of this game is how much do you know about the history of ritual misery? Oh, I was, I was there for a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I recall you were. All right, Amos, your first question. In which year did we record the infamous Myrtle Beach ritual misery music video? 1996. And of course, and of course that answer was, uh, it was given away. <laughs> In the music video, or in the uh, video at the beginning, um, but yeah, I figured I'd get that one by you. Maybe you didn't pay attention. It was uh, it was actually your birthday weekend, nineteen ninety six. Yeah, so let's so let's talk about that video. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, the the full uncut version of that video is available to our patrons. In the treasure box, which I, uh, if someone reminds me after this, I will post a new, a fresh link so you don't have to d- go digging um, to the treasure box for people that are at the appropriate levels in the Patreon. I believe it's the, I think it's the three dollar level. It's the that sounds right. That sounds yeah. right. Um, but yeah, so this video, the the whole point of this video. All right, when we were in high school, we put together a, a garage band of sorts. Mm. It's on drums. It was more like a back bedroom band, not really a garage well, band. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> if we had a garage, we'd have been there. Right, right. Uh, um, then, uh, and then Jeremy on guitars. It was pretty much the consistency of the band. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and calling it a band is pretty uh, it's loose. You know, we're, we're loosely a band, I guess. We would show up and we would practice together and... Um, it was pretty bad. We'd show up and get drunk and, and fuck around a little is what we'd what we would do. We, yeah, we had all it, the parts down except for the music. We we had aspirations of being a Metallica cover band and uh, like you were uh, you were a bit of a songwriter. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I uh, a lyricist in, in any case. Yeah, at, at least a lyricist, if not a, a, a song I, I, I did write two uh songs that kind of got fleshed out. Um They'll never see the light of day because there's no recordings of them. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that that didn't really go anywhere. It only lasted for a short time, and then. But we always had this like kind of like, man, how cool would it be to be rock stars? Mm-hmm. And when you were living in South Carolina and I was living in Florida, when we first joined the Air Force, uh, I drove up to visit you. And like you said, it was my birthday weekend. Wait, was it that one? Was yeah. it my birthday weekend? Yeah, because okay. you, you got there the first day and crashed out while we all went to go watch ID4. And right. Then, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. like, on yeah. Friday night, we decided, well, let's just go to Myrtle Beach and see what's going on there. And we were like, okay, we don't have plans. We don't have 
money for a hotel or anything. We can put gas in the truck and that's about it. Like, well, fuck it. We'll figure it out. And we went, hung out all night and ended up crashing the truck on the way back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh my God. <laughs> like, God, we were so poor. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, poor we, and adventurous. That would have been the name uh, of our second band. Yeah. So on the, on the boardwalk at Myrtle Beach, they, they have all these little like touristy things that you can do. And one of them was to make a music video with fake instruments. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's a little behind the scenes. Those are fake instruments in case well, you couldn't figure it out. I, I think they were real instruments. They just didn't have any. Oh, sure. They, so like they, the drums, they were, it was a real drum kit, but they didn't have heads. Right. Yeah. Then or the, cymbals. It was a real guitar that I was holding, but it had no strings. Oh, no strings. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it was fun dude, to make. And the dude was like, uh, uh, here you go. Do you want the guitar? You're like, uh, well, actually, I play bass. He was like, all right, cool. Here's a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. was crazy. All right, Amos. Your second question. Okay. What was the name of our failed Vlogbrother style YouTube channel? Oxford Chronicles. It was, in fact, Oxford Chronicles. Tell us, because this was 100% your brainchild. Tell us, like, uh, how this even came about. Why, why did you want to start this? Oh, well, because I wanted to do something uh, involved with you that, would, uh, that, that we could keep in touch and kind of just show snippets and be expressive and share that. And I thought our conversation was pretty cool, so maybe we'd have some good ideas and little videos to do. And I saw the Vlad Brothers and was like, <laughs> yeah. well, if we... If we take that and throw a little twist on it, you know, we can do our own little flavor and kind of have the same flow going on. Um, but that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, you made a couple of videos. You made the first one. I made the first one, uh, the second one, and, and the fourth one, I think. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. And uh, Yeah, I did one. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this was right when I moved to New Mexico. I didn't even have my like household goods or anything. I had nothing. So I I filmed a little something, yep. <laughs> like nothing in my house, and uh, all, with just my phone, I had no way to edit the video. I think I was able to like maybe cut the ends off of the video and not much right. else on my phone. You, you had iMovie on your phone, and that was it. Cause, yeah, because yeah. it was free. <laughs> yep, it was uh, it was pretty awful, and I was like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was kind of the genesis of the idea of doing uh, like online collaborative, mm -hmm. creative thing. And you're that welcome. Was the direct precursor yeah. of the podcast. Yep. Um, and then, yeah. as as you and I were discussing how that was not working because you suck at video, um, <laughs> I caught wind of how to do how we could do a podcast for free and started taking the steps and. And the only cost was the domain itself, which would think was like 12 bucks for the first two years through GoDaddy or something like that. And then we just kind of went from there. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, a, a, a URL or a, uh, you know, a web domain is optional for mm -hmm. doing a podcast. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> some okay. people will tell you that it's required, but mm, not really. And you can put a podcast out there without one. Oh, yeah. What's um, next? Okay. So we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. Eventually, or pretty quickly, actually, we actually started publishing these things. Mm. What was the first episode of Pub the show that was published on iTunes? Episode five. Okay. Let me rephrase the question. What was the, and I'll get back to that. What was the first recorded episode that ended up on iTunes? Episode three. Okay. All right. So the, that was kind of a, yeah. Cause, right. cause There's two parts to that. <laughs> it, it, you, you nailed both of it. The, the order was five, three, four, six, eight, seven. <laughs> yeah. So help me understand why you, if you intended to publish episode three, why was that not the first episode published? Uh, <clears throat> well, it kind of went, uh, five was easier. There was less editing to do, and it was a funner episode for, from my point of view. And then right after I published five, I ended up with a big chunk of time and didn't have anything else to do. So I started working backwards. 
I got four done and then waited and got three done, ran out of time, published three, published four, and called it a day. <laughs> so five went out there first because you got impatient, I think. Uh, yeah, really, it, it kind of did. And then one and two never saw the light of day. They were in the treasure box, but they didn't make it out because they were just so completely rough that it was... It, <laughs> I, I was not able to edit my way through that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Become a so. patron and then and check those early <laughs> episodes out. Oh my gosh. If you dare. All right. Uh, which episode was the first one to be live streamed? Episode eight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Back in the days of Google Hangout. Woo-hoo. Y- yes. Um, another key uh, taken from uh, Dr. Tom Merritt. Um, yeah. Google Hangouts wasn't terrible <laughs> for what it was. At but the it wasn't time, great podcasting tool. It, it, at the time, it had less lag than Skype, which is what we were using be- prior to that. Yep. And we tried uh, uh, Hangouts, had less lag, and we're like, you know what? Since we're doing it by Hangout anyway, if I push this little button right here, it blasts out there to the internet, and then we have a live show as well. So let's yep. go ahead and do that. And it worked. And it automatically recorded for uh, for backup purposes. Yeah, so it was it was excellent. And I think it's, what, later this year, Google Hangouts is no longer going to be a thing? Um, Google Plus, Google Hangouts... Uh, May not fly under that banner any longer, but the functionality will still exist. Google Plus is completely gone. Yeah, I thought I'd read somewhere that Hangouts was leaving too. It might be. I maybe I just haven't caught up to that news yet. All right, so we eventually decided to start getting guests on the show, mm. uh, mainly starting with with our friend Jeremy, who was in the aforementioned Garage Band with us. Yep. And that was kind of a hit or miss venture. It was it was fun to have a third person for a while, but then. Um, issues got in the way, <laughs> uh, and uh, he hasn't been on the show for a while. Uh, primarily, he's got a very busy life that is most busy right about the same time that we record. So he's either completely crashed out from a long day, or just ginning up getting ready to do ten million things. So he just didn't quite work work out, and it took us about three times for him to show up on the show for us to figure that out that it wasn't working. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we- we might actually have him on for a future show, just yeah. to reminisce about the old times. Yeah, the last time he was on was your retirement episode that never saw the light of day. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's not even in the treasure box. <laughs> no. That should never see the light of day. It's it's on YouTube. You just can't. I was, uh, it's dude, private. I was horrified. I thought I had made that video private. Turns out it wasn't for about two days. Yeah. And had my coworkers was like, hey, man, what's your retirement episode? That was pretty funny. Yeah, what? Because you were <laughs> yeah, you, you were completely shit hammered the entire time. It was it was awful. Yeah, uh, and and whew. Squid just threw a link in the chat, so I'm gonna have to follow that later. Thanks, Squid. About the uh, <laughs> the hangout shutdown. Right. Yeah. 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 Lots of changes going on over there at Google. Um. But yeah. So we continue to get on guests. We talked about Margaret Weiss a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let me ask you this: Which famous author was our first guest? Well, not our first guest on the show, but which which famous author was our guest first? Was it was it Margaret Weiss or was it Steve Perry? Which one was first? Which one was first? I'm gonna say Steve Perry. Um, by I think like three episodes. Okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. Because Margaret Weiss was episode 77, I believe. And I think Steve Perry was episode 80. Ooh, that's tough. That was really close. There's like three weeks apart between the two. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my first answer and go Steve Perry. You say Steve Perry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was Margaret Weiss. Uh they were they were on about a month apart from each other, three three or four episodes apart. Yeah. Margaret was on, I think it was episode 46. Six, Ooh, was it that early? Steve was episode fifty. Okay. Oh well. The first time Steve was on, was right, right, because we've had him on since. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I would love to get him on again to get his get his thoughts about <laughs> Solo because when <laughs> Solo came out last year, there was a lot of elements that he had written about that he actually originated in you, the Star Wars universe. You never even got a chance to talk to him about karate. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah, I know. We've, yeah, we've yeah. had him on twice and it still I, barely happened. <laughs> yeah, well, I yeah, I have not practiced martial arts in a couple of years now, yeah. so uh, my interest in that has waned. Uh, but but the uh, so anybody that's watched Solo uh, might remember uh, one of the characters talking about a martial art called Terrace Kazi, and everyone is like, "Oh, they're referencing the video game on PlayStation 2. Or PlayStation 1, was it PlayStation 1 or 2? It, it doesn't matter. The old PlayStation game, Masters of Terrace Kazi. Well, sure, there was a video game called that, but that's not where that came from. That came from this novel right here that I'm holding in my hand called Shadows of the Empire by Steve Perry. This was the first ever uh, reference or mention of Terrace Kazi because Steve invented it. And then a year or two later, a video game came out based on it. Uh, but just for the record, and uh, also for the record, Steve is an awesome guy. And um, Flavor Toothpaste says PS1. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, anyway. Or, or <laughs> as it was known at the time, PlayStation. 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 Yeah. I used to be able to do it. I can't do it. All right, what's your next question, man? Uh, how else can I make myself look a fool? All right, this is actually the final question of this particular quiz. Oh. Which guest holds the record for the most appearances? Oh, my God. <laughs> There's, uh, talk me through it. There's, okay, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Jeremy's got five. Okay. Um, Richard Gunther is going to have six. And I think Tay has six. Does Squid count? Because Squid would be up there pretty high, too. Uh, well, actual numbered episodes? Like, I need some clarification. Uh, yes, let's go with, n let's say numbered episodes. Yes. Okay, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to agree with Squid in the chat and say Tay, because I believe Tay broke the tie when she was on earlier this month. Between her and Richard. Hmm. Richard actually holds the record oh. with 10 appearances on the show. It means he's on an average of every 20 episodes. Yeah. He's on twice a year. Second place is Jackie Hearn with eight. Oh, dag. And then Tay's got the seven, right? Tay and Crunchy are tied with six. Oh. And then Jeremy's got five. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I didn't write down. He's uh, he's, he's gonna yeah. yell at you next time he watches this episode. <laughs> yeah, God probably. damn it! <laughs> it's technically six. Six, just because you uh, didn't show one. So you uh you scored a four out out of a total possible of six. Four out of six. Uh, so let me do some back of the envelope math. Um, yeah. Uh. Hey, it's not, you don't have an IQ of two hundred. Hey, hey, you. Google, what's four divided by six? The answer is approximately zero point six six seven. Take that times two. It's about one twenty, and I guesstimated a one oh five. I think I'm good to go, or one ten. So yeah, I, I wasn't too far off. <laughs> yeah. So that was our. That was our. That's cool. Is, um, let me ask you a couple questions. Okay. They're going to be subjective because I didn't actually do any research because, um, oh, by the way, I need to tell you, hey, retirement is fucking hard and I underappreciated your troubles with retirement while you were going through it, while we were recording the show and while I was in Korea. So I apologize for that because retirement is fucking hard. I'm not even doing the retirement aspect of it yet. I'm just trying to close shit out so that I can retire and retirement yep. is hard. Um, so my apologies and my appreciation <laughs> uh, ex post facto. And uh, that all being said, um, who was your favorite guest? Not 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 your like most memorable, but your favorite guest. Of all time. Of all time. Oh, my goodness. You, you can weigh it however you want. Yeah, that's dude. That's that's rough. Um you know, we, so we talked about Margaret we talked a little bit about Steve. I, mm -hmm. I really loved having them on, but that was more like a fanboy 
uh, you know, like accomplishment, like we accomplished something by having them on. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, geez. There was a lot of fun ones. Uh, you know, it's always great having Richard on and Tay. A lot of our, our repeat guests, the reason they're repeat guests is because we really enjoy having them on. Right. Um, as much as Jackie wants to deny that, she's a lot of fun to have on the show. <laughs> I know. She's so modest. Uh, no, we love have Jackie on. And, yep. and we'll probably, I don't know, next few weeks or so, we might reach out to her and never run again. Yeah. So all that being said, who's your favorite? Yeah. It's so hard, man. It's not for me. I know exactly who I would pick. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So you gotta you gotta give up yours and then I can cough up mine like that. Oh my gosh! So I'm just I'm skimming a, a list right now. Um, man, I don't. It's so hard to pick, man. I don't know. It's always great having Odokta on. Yeah. Um. Jeez, I don't know. I I, I can't I can't pick. Well, I can. Okay. My favorite Ritual Misery guest of all time is Richard. Okay. Not only because it's always fun to have him on, but because of the friendship that he and I have kindled and developed, the help that he's been for me, the times I've been able to help him, the the podcast relationship that we've cultivated with uh, Let's Talk About Thrones with Jenny and things like that. Like It just, if I look back at uh, and I had to single out to a single guest that has done uh, the most for me personally and for the show and for um, uh, just overall, like I having Richard on the first time was amazing. Having him on every since then has been amazing. And all the things that have come from that have been just ridiculously awesome. So if I had to name just one, I would go with Richard. If you gave me five, I, I it would be almost impossible to pick the other four. Um, right. Because then it starts getting complicated. But if I look at the overall structure of everything, it has to be Richard. Richard has to be my favorite guest that we've we've had on for so many reasons. Yeah, which makes sense why he's been on more than anyone else. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Rich, Richard is, is um, awesome. And, that, and that's that, and that's hard because you got to figure, you know, Tay, like how, when have I not almost pissed myself having Tay on the podcast, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the, yep. the hour long conversation conversation that I had with Curtis about race after the show last time we had him on by himself and you know there's there so many different things all the Diamond Clubbers Brian Justin Tom um, you know Scott and and uh, Chamberlain you know just it's, it's so many God two hundred two hundred episodes man yeah <laughs> MJ so, Snow says uh, can't is worried that he's gonna hurt someone's feelings Amos is not. <laughs> Amos is uh, 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 mm-hmm. if, if Amos doesn't like you, he's he has no problem letting you know. <laughs> There's that. Uh, the opposite is true as well. I I have I don't mind tipping the waitress a penny when she sucks, but I'm going to give her a 25 percent tip when she's awesome. So, and Kit knows, <laughs> Kit knows both sides of this for like he's seen both sides of this. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my god, I used to do shit like that when I was like a teenager. Hmm. It, you know, for my first experiences with tipping, um, I, you know, I thought if they weren't awesome, they didn't deserve shit or they yeah. deserve, you know, literally a penny. I am so ashamed of my younger self for doing that. <laughs> that is, uh, not cool at all. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I used to figure you started off at like 5% and you kind of worked up from there or worked down from there. And now it's more like, 15 is my standard. I yeah. get good service. It goes up to 20. Awesome, amazing service. And it goes to a manager. Um, and then kind of the other way around, too. Even if you're just a complete shit waitress, I'll, I'm still going to like at least make your time worthwhile because you did at least bring my food. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you had to pick a single episode, what episode would be your favorite? Hmm. I feel somehow I feel like this would have been easier before I did all of the, uh, you know, putting the video together and stuff like that. Cause I'm so like, I'm too far in the rabbit hole now to yeah. think subjectively about it. Um, Oh my gosh. I, I've had some really, really fun episodes. I think, um, some of the episodes with Fitz actually are some of the most fun. Mm. Um, that dude is just 
he he's so quick witted and just funny as hell at all times. And he's got some some really interesting insights on on a bunch of different subjects. And um, he's always fun, man. Um, oh, one of my favorite guests that I that I wasn't thinking of earlier was was Tonda Gasa. Oh yeah, that was, that was a good episode too, dude. Is there a nicer person on the planet? Um, I mean, he's up there in the running with <laughs> with with um with the couple. Um, of course, all the nicest people I've ever met are Diamond Club, so I don't know what to say. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um. So what? One of my favorites, actually. Now that I'm thinking about this, was when you surprised me with having the entire uh, have a drink crew. Mm. So that was a blast. Like I had so much fun with that episode and. During the the extended post show, yeah, I got to tell my story about uh, my interactions with with um, uh, the the Dogfish Head uh, founder and head brewer uh, Sam Calagione, and that was a lot of fun. I'd been wanting to tell those those folks that story for the longest time, and I always thought I would do it on their show, but to have them on our show and tell it there was was really cool. Yeah, meeting them in Nertacular was just spectacular like we uh, w- 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 we 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 met them when they first arrived and we we kind of you know did the little meet and hey how you doing kind of thing we didn't actually right. hang out with them until the very end of nerdtacular and i was like yep we've wasted so much time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had the fortune of of meeting them in person before turf. i had even heard of them yeah uh, was um when i was in kentucky for for some training of a couple of years back. Yeah. And I went to visit hot beverages because she was just like an hour up the road or something like that. So we ended up going to, uh, uh, Chris and Brittany's house for, it was like a, like half party, half, uh, a podcast recording. And she was like, yeah, these people are cool that we're going to, you know, we're going to go see them. And, and, um, uh, you're, you're probably going to like them because they like beer. I was like, oh yeah, I, you know, of course. <laughs> I like people who like beer. And she's like, oh, and also they do a podcast about it. I was like, what, what now? <laughs> Firing and, uh, on all cylinders as hot beverages does. Yeah, yeah. It was it was so much fun to meet them. It was such a blast hanging out at their place, and um, it's just been it's been awesome ever since getting them on, not just our show, but on the Streamathon, and um, getting them hooked up with with uh, Sergeant Muffin to stream on on DC TV and yep. all of that sort of stuff was just it was just serendipitous how all that worked out. Um, I would have to say that uh, my favorite episode ever keeps changing because it's always the, whatever the most recent one is that I've, that we've pushed out. Um, <laughs> because let's face it, man, you and I we we get together and we do crazy shit, but we never really stick to it. Uh, thus the, the garage band that was once called ritual misery. Um, but for whatever reason, man, we've stuck around and done this for four and a half years now. Like this is amazing. 200 episodes down. Um, pretty sweet. Yeah. So we did a poll. We did an audience poll. Oh yes. And, uh, went for a couple of months at least. Yeah. uh, We got a, we got a decent amount of responses. So I just wanted to to run through some of the, um, some of the results for that and discuss them with you. We got four Uh, results. I have not discussed the results of it yet. We have not. And I I briefly took a look at it, uh, back when we were supposed to do episode 200 the first time. So (laughs) I don't know if anybody's gone in there and added anything since then. So I'm going to, I'm going in this like three quarter blind. All right. So the, the, the first poll question is what is your favorite show segment? And I listed out segments that that we've had before, and then um, it was a fill in too. So like if you if there was something else that you liked better than anything, you can uh, you could choose that. And overwhelmingly, the Kent's game segment yeah is people's favorite. So it's a good thing that I enjoy doing this because <laughs> <laughs> I we're, it's definitely going to continue. And I'm sure some of that has to do with the people that have crossed over from uh, DKG Welp to us. Because that's, that's pretty much all that game is, or all that show is. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's it's almost a, it's almost a, like a mix between what Drunk Kids Gaming uh, does with with DKG Welp, and the the games that uh, Brian and Justin are put through by Bryce and uh, Chat Realm. Mm-hmm. Each, um, it's kind of a it's kind of a mashup of of that idea, I guess, but a, more simplified usually. I mean, every now and then I'll, I'll I'll switch it up. I'll do crazy games for Tay or something like that. But usually. Uh, they're, they're fairly straightforward quiz games. 
Um, and then the the second most popular thing was geeky thing of the week. So mm. I think we'll I think we'll keep that. Uh, maybe maybe some modifications on uh, on presentation, but um, yeah, I think it's a segment worth keeping. All right. The next question was, which RMP additional content have you enjoyed? Check all that apply. Uh, I listed the New Year's Eve streamathon, interview mm-hmm. specials, mm-hmm. Uh, kilo episodes, which for those that don't remember them, they were the old short form solo episodes that Amos and I would kind of take turns doing uh, for a while. Uh, South by Southwest live events mm-hmm. and then call in specials. The number one response was for interview specials. Oh, wow. Yeah, we might have to do some more of those. Right on its heels, though, is the New Year's Eve streamathon. Right. Uh, and, and no that, surprise there. That's kind of what I expected. And uh, not in the lead was the RMP live events because. <laughs> yeah, but it was, I mean, it was in third place. So <clears throat> yeah. I, I think it was just the, not so much the like stage act that we tried to do a couple of years ago. I think it's more so the, the, meet the meetups up and the, yeah. the smaller games that we that we do. Yeah. Uh, like the one we did last year was amazing. Like it was so much fun. It was, yeah, it was so much better than the stage show that we did. And we didn't record it because we suck. <laughs> <laughs> there are some moments recorded. Like when uh, when Brian and Justin came and we had them do their their night attack intro, but as each other. Yeah. That was uh, gold. Yeah, that was amazing. That's <laughs> that's recorded. So All right, uh, what's next? All right. Next is who is the best RMP guest of all time? Who do you think was oh. chosen by the audience as the best guest of all time? Because this was totally a fill in. That's got to be Tay. It is 100% Tay. <laughs> like it is. So because it was a fill in, you only get, you know, results based on like what, um, you know, if you spell something differently, it's a separate entry. Right? Yeah. So we've got one vote for Tay. <laughs> um, we've got. Uh, or I, I said one, but we've got, so 14% was for Tay. And then, uh, 28.6% is for Tay Allen. Uh, 14.3% for Tay Allen and Richard Gunther. Uh, 14.3% for Tay. Hmm. Just Tay. Uh, yeah. And then another 14% for, uh, let me think about that. <laughs> and, and then a 14% <laughs> for Ace Detect. Oh, okay. So fair enough. Yeah. He's, he's been on the show twice. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, even more, two numbered episodes. He's right. been on even more if you consider, uh, like, uh, streamathon shows and yeah. various, like, things that we've done. Real quick, um, so this week Tom is out on DTNS, and I've been doing backup recording for Roger. Uh, and last couple of days I've, I've had to do it from work, so I basically have my laptop set up, hooked up to hotspotting to my iPad, um, and just running uh, uh, um audio hijack and recording the show and yesterday it didn't mean anything like okay uh, where everything worked out good today something happened to roger's recording justin forgot to record so my recording <laughs> became the official recording <laughs> nice. yeah uh, squid says government money spit well yeah well it, yeah you save dtns yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> Money well spent. Thanks, Uncle Sam. Um, the Gen Plays uh, jumped in and says, wait, am I here at a live show? Yes, you yes. are. We are still uh, still doing the show. We haven't closed it out yet. We're running through some results of our 200th episode survey. Yeah, so we're actually about to move into the next the next question. It's related to the first one. Who's mm-hmm. your favorite recurring guest? Um, Kent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this one actually had uh, folks listed out. Some of our more common uh, recurring guests were listed. And then, a, then there was a, a fill in the blank. Um, again, once again, Tay uh, ran away with this with 42.9% mm. of the vote. Um, right behind her in second place with 21.4% was Crunchy. And then in third place was Jury Facts. Oh, uh, yeah. We talked to him during the streamathon. We're going to have to get him in, on soon as a proper guest yet again. Yeah. Uh, good times. And, and then there, uh, was, there were several other people that kind of all tied for, for fourth place. So. And the Jen just subbed in and uh, appreciate that. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much appreciated. All uh, right. So then the actually the final poll question was, do you have a favorite moment or episode from RMP's four-year history? 
tell us something you have really enjoyed about the show. And this was 100% fill in. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and just read through these. Okay. Uh, there were, let's see, how many people responded to this question? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight people responded to this question. So I'm going to go ahead and read them out. All right, favorite moments. When you cross the line from beta. That was a, good, that was a good time. We had Scott Johnson and Tom and Merritt. Tom Merritt on, yep. And Tom declared that we were no longer in beta. We were now release candidate. It, this was coming off the, the, the tail end of a, a Cubs win on the Super the the, uh, the World Series as well. So it was like, and Scott was at, um, he was at BlizzCon. So it was like, it was just the whole thing was just remarkable that it actually went off at all. So yeah, happy. I was surprised. Yeah, we went on like two hours late because the World Series went into extra innings and it was, it was insane. Freaking insane. Uh, all right. So then the, the next response was South by Southwest. Mm. So that could be, you know, just in general, like us showing up, or it could be referring to our. It's, our a, it's, it, it's or, us buying beer so the people with the still in beta shirts. That's what that yes, is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Probably, that was probably Darker Deemer that I, I, I can't even tell you how many beers I bought him because he wears our shirts at all the events. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Uh, being on it hmm. was from a responder. Being on what? On the show or just on <laughs> it? Because. Well, it's not capitalized, so it's almost for sure the show. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, somebody put Jury Fax Mom. Okay. Um, that, I think they may have some facts wrong, but okay. Uh, Kent's solo Mother's Day episode totally made me cry. Hmm. Then Jen, I've, the Jen says, uh, every time you, every time the streamathon ends and neither of you has the brain cells functioning any longer, but you push through anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that is legit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the the solo solo Mother's Day episode was that was one of the kilo episodes. Mm -hmm. I went about Mother's Day. I kind of wrote a, uh, basically like wrote a letter to my mom who had passed away the the previous year. Yep, so it was like the first Mother's Day. Um, without mom and yeah i um i appreciate someone actually telling me that that made them cry and yep. they, this was a favorite moment from the show so um thank you for that all right the next one is the episode of the interview with justin's mom gloria young that was a lot of fun that was a lot of work yeah yeah a lot we of work went into that both in <laughs> the preparation just you know figuring out what we were going to ask her. Well, actually, even before that, let's rewind a little bit more. Yeah. Getting basically getting Justin's permission <laughs> to yeah. contact his mom. Yeah, that's that's exactly how that went. We went to Justin and said, hey, we'd love to have your mom on. And he was like, yeah, of course. And then like sobered up the next day and was like, why the hell you want to talk to my mom? And <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, uh, point to order. If you ever want to get with Jury's mom, uh, make sure you ask him when he's drunk, <laughs> and don't wait till the next day. <laughs> oh my gosh! But yeah. So getting it all set up was a lot of work. Getting the uh, it, you know figuring out exactly what we wanted to ask her and where we were going to take the conversation. It took weeks, and then she wouldn't. She didn't want to do it live, and then we couldn't do it during the week because it wasn't the, one of the live shows. We had to do it during the weekend, and we had to get all three weekends to. And then, oh my gosh, it was, yeah. And then jury had to help with facilitate the call itself. It was kind of, it was <laughs> the, and, and still we got it. Yeah. It, still we got an hour of it and it was just amazing. The whole thing was amazing. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was great. It turned out wonderful. I, I have no complaints about that. All right. Um, somebody says the best episode had to be 191. Um, 191. Yeah, what was – because whoever the – oh, I think Squid was on that episode. <laughs> so I'm, there's, a, there's a good chance that Squid was the, the answer on that one. Um, and then the final, the final response was love it all. And um, I just want to say I, I appreciate everyone who took this poll, um, especially yep. the fill-in-the-blank answers. Uh, you actually you know, thought about what you were going to write. Uh, very much appreciated. It was a lot of fun. It, it gives us a little bit of insight to the things that you like on this show and kind of gives us an idea of where we want to, 
go in the future with like, you know, segments that we definitely want to keep, segments we want to improve, things that probably shouldn't make a return. Um, <laughs> but not saying they won't, just that they shouldn't. <laughs> speaking of, of, of old segments that shouldn't make a return, um, Amos, we have a we have a guest that uh, a call in guest that we should uh, go ahead and get on the show. <laughs> Because an old uh, segment is about to make a uh, non-awaited return. Oh, good times. <laughs> Let's see how this works out. I'm going to guess it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go. Oh, thank you, Cabo, uh, for your subscription. Awesome. Okay, uh, let, me, let me make sure I get my, my scene right here. Because it should be this one right here. It is. And then we will all hit the switch and unmute his his ass. <laughs> Wait, no, something's wrong. Um, let's go and undo that. Now it should work properly. I'll hit this little button here and hit this button over here. And Squid, how are you? It's oh, good. God, you did it again. So, Squid, <laughs> you... You hit me up before the show, and you told me that uh, whatever whatever we end up saying about the history of RMP is probably made up bullshit, and we're just gonna we're gonna throw out some not true uh, version of how it all started. Uh, but somehow you ended up with uh, with with it's all, a story. it's all bullshit. These guys, these two fools, lie to all of you constantly. I'm the only one with the real truth of how this all started. Okay. All right. All right. I'm, I'm willing to give him his turn because he's got an RMP shirt on. <laughs> and it's the still in beta one too. So when are, where's my beer? Uh, <laughs> it, it's, you gotta be, you gotta show up at a live event. <laughs> uh, I'm screwed there. All right. All right. So l let me tell you guys how this all really started. You see these two idiot keys, the uh, kids thought they were amazing when they made a sick VHS called fuck. Of course, nothing came of it for about 161 years until Amos needed to bust in about life. The universe and a lack of uh, bust in about life, the universe and a lack of Margaret Rice Weiss. Remembering his unbreakable, stupid friend Amos. I'm sorry. Remembering his stupid, unbreakable friend Amos contacted Kent for the opportunity to dominate his adventure to the Oxford Chronicles. You can tell my words suck. <laughs> <laughs> words are hard. They are. They Dude. are really hard. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. A little uh, it's, little it's uh, ritual libs refresh right there. Yep. Um, yeah, there's a, a, a segment that we used to do a lot of and um, got to be a lot of work and kind of annoying to put it together. And it yeah, did, but it's it, my favorite. It, it didn't always work out either. Sometimes it was really stupid. And, and all three of us, you, me, and the guest, would be sitting there looking at each other like, um... Yeah, like, why did that just happen? <laughs> should 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 that go away? <laughs> and that's that's why I loved it. It's the extreme awkwardness of it. It was just so bad sometimes. You just gotta love it. I, historically, my, my favorite libs was when we had Crunchy on the show, and we... <laughs> Had, we had a libs and then she after we were done she's like oh we're not done with this segment because while you guys were making this one for me i make <laughs> one for you guys <laughs> that was the best one yep all right well uh sean thank you very much for for coming in and and uh, doing that for us uh where can people find more of you if they want their own libs you know somewhere in demon land but um, i'm always at i am squidicus on twitter and if you contact me, I might say hi. I might be polite. I might give you some love with my ten tentacles. Okay. <laughs> like I said, bring on the awkward, right? There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, Kent, how about you, man? Yeah, I'm Del Noche pretty much everywhere. Some version of that. RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. 
uh, Del Noche 77 in a few places, but uh, just uh, search Del Noche on your favorite platform and you're probably going to find me. There we go. And I'm Amos at Ethan Kane with the tweets E T H A N C A I N E. You can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas to our subreddit at ritualmisery.reddit.com. And you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on. Wait, uh, hold on. I got a, I got a stinger for this. Oh, supposedly this one. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and twitchcom slash misery. I think we're on Diamond Club. I don't know. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music, and thank you for listening for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your. I'm stretching out here. Ritual Misery Podcast. Yeah. R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y